In this video, we will show you some of the rare photos of Loretta Lynn while sharing with you some of her untold life stories. In interviews and on stage, Loretta Lynn always seemed like the happiest woman alive. But the truth is her life was one of the most tragic in the music business, and she paid a heavy price for her fame. From getting pregnant when she was just a child to facing three big tragedies that nearly destroyed her, this is the untold story of her life while you enjoy some of her awesome photos. Loretta was still just a girl by today's standards when she met her husband, Oliver Doolittle Lynn. In fact, by today's standards, they would have sent Doolittle to jail. Right from the start, Loretta's parents didn't want the young man anywhere near their daughter, and her mother was furious whenever she heard Loretta was with him. Don't you ever let me hear of that ever happening again. He's too old and he's too wild for you. <laughs> but it happened. And as it turned out, Loretta's parents were right to worry because their worst fears came true. Loretta and Du, as she called him, had known each other for just one month before they got married. She was just 15 and he was 21. So upset was Loretta's mother that she refused to attend the wedding. It was just hours after their wedding that Du raised his hand to Loretta for the first time, and he would do it many, many times throughout their marriage. Shortly after tying the knot, Loretta discovered she was pregnant with her first child. But remember, she was almost still just a child herself. Loretta was still so young and innocent that she did not fully understand where babies really came from. As she would later share, When I got married, I didn't even know what pregnant meant. I was five months pregnant when I went to the doctor and he said, You're gonna have a baby. I said, No way. And if you think her new husband was supportive, think again. In fact, you won't believe what he did he left his teenage pregnant wife for another woman. Suddenly, Loretta was on her own. She was pregnant and she was scared. She moved back in with her parents, but only for a short while before Du's conscience finally caught up with him and he begged Loretta to take him back. And she did, much to the dismay of her parents. So Loretta moved far away from her hometown to be with her husband where he had found work on a farm. But as a profitable side hustle, he also made and sold illegal moonshine. Loretta, still pregnant, also worked on the farm to earn her keep, cooking and cleaning for the farmhands. I worked and cleaned house for people and I picked strawberries. On November 26, 1948, Loretta finally gave birth and welcomed a baby girl, Betty. Just one year later, they had their second child, Jack. They couldn't afford the hospital stay and Loretta was sent home just a few hours after giving birth. In her memoir, she wrote, I rested for a while, then had to wash out diapers and draw water from the well less than 24 hours after delivering. Judging from Loretta's own words, it's clear that her husband didn't support her, and she had to raise the children mostly by herself without any help from him. Following the birth of their second child, Loretta suffered one of the hardest things any mother could ever endure. She suffered it twice, and she suffered it alone. She shared the heartbreak in her book, writing, After I had that second baby, I had two miscarriages and things nearly took a turn for the worst after the second time when Loretta almost died of blood poisoning. Since they were too poor to afford the medical fees, she did not go to hospital when she got sick. When they realized it was blood poisoning, it was almost too late. By the time Loretta was 20, she had already given birth to four of their six children. Sometimes Du would just disappear for weeks on end with no word of where he was or when he would be back. During such times, Loretta and the kids couldn't always afford food and were borderline starving. At one point, it was so bad, Loretta said, We ate dandelions, me and the kids, for almost two weeks. But not helping with the children and not being a supportive husband wasn't the worst of Dew's traits. It got far worse for the poor young Loretta. Not only did her husband love cheating on her, he also had a bad habit of looking too deep into the bottle. And when he did, he became violent and would often physically abuse Loretta. But if you should know one thing about Loretta Lynn, it's that she was a remarkably strong woman and she never just took it lying down. As she once said herself, she was made out of tough stuff. I didn't pay no attention to him. I could whip him. If he hit me once, I hit him twice. <laughs> he knew it too. <laughs> and believe it or not, Loretta once even knocked some of Dew's teeth out. But he wasn't the only one that Loretta had knocked. She openly admitted that she had on occasion physically confronted some of her husband's mistresses. I went right into action. I went for the hair. She was bigger than me, but I held my own. Dew's many affairs and his hard drinking were the inspiration behind some of her greatest songs, like Fist City, You Ain't Woman Enough, and Don't Come Home a Drinkin'. But if things got so bad in her marriage, why did Loretta not just run away from him? Well, the simple answer was this. 
I loved him. But the truth was a lot more complicated than that. Loretta always had one question in her heart. What about her children? For Loretta, it was fine if Dew had broken her heart a million times over, but she could not bear the thought of having her children's hearts broken as well. But just as Loretta's husband could be mean, he could be just as loving and caring. In fact, it was Dew who inspired and encouraged her to start music. Long before she became a country music star, she would sing her own songs to him. Even though Loretta had no instrument to put music to her songs, Du loved every tune that came from her lips as she sang to him. So, he bought Loretta's first guitar for her. Du was so impressed with her that he knew she was a star waiting to be born. He persuaded her to pursue music as a career and thank heavens she listened to him. Loretta shot to stardom almost immediately, but she suffered under Du's strict control. She would later reveal that she never made any decisions without Du's say-so. In short, as she said, Du was the boss, and that's the way it was. But stardom and fame didn't come without a heavy price to pay. She missed the kids, and life on the road while touring was painfully lonely for her. At the same time, however, Du was still looking into the bottle, and the couple fought a lot. Too much. She even admitted that sometimes, despite the aching loneliness, she would rather be on the road than be at home with her husband, who was constantly drinking and fighting. I never knew what I was coming home to. I didn't know if I was coming home to fightin' or what. But that was just part of the tragedies she'd to deal with during the course of her life. In fact, in Loretta's life, there were two great tragedies that nearly destroyed her. And the first one, really, is the worst thing that could happen to any mother. In 1984, Loretta suffered a seizure while on tour, and she ended up in hospital. Little did she know that at the very moment that she was fighting for her life, her son Jack was also fighting for his life. Sadly, Jack, who was 34 at the time, drowned while trying to cross a river on horseback. They say mothers shouldn't have a favorite child, but it was no secret that Jack was Loretta's favorite. As mother and son, they were extremely close, and the wounds left by his death never completely healed. In an emotional Instagram post, Loretta wrote, You are never the same after you bury one of your children. Never. I've thought of him and missed him every day for 37 years. Her second great tragedy came in less than a decade later. In the early 90s, Du fell terribly ill with heart failure and diabetes. His condition was so severe that both his legs had to be amputated. Loretta immediately put her career on hold to care for her husband. For years on end, she stayed by his bedside. The only time she would sleep was when Du was sleeping. Otherwise, she tended to his every need feeding him, bathing him, and giving him his medicine. In 1996, after 48 years together, Du died in Loretta's loving arms. Despite their tumultuous, crazy marriage, Loretta and Du truly loved each other. That Du and me was probably one of the hardest and the best love story that's ever been told. It was a hard love story, but we did love each other. After the loss of her husband, Loretta's world nearly imploded. Slowly but surely, she clawed her way back, and in time, she resumed her career. But in 2013, she once again lived a mother's worst nightmare when she lost her firstborn, Betty, to complications of emphysema. Betty was just 64. Again, very devastating experience for Loretta, but she eventually picked up herself and continued living her life. But how is she able to survive through all these ordeals? Well, part of what made Loretta such a strong and powerful woman and made of tough stuff, as she said, was her very difficult childhood. Loretta was born in Butcher Hollow, Kentucky on April 14, 1932. She was the second oldest of eight siblings. Between five boys and three girls, she was the oldest daughter. Her father, Melvin, had worked on the railroads for some time, and after that, he became a coal miner. He would work on his hands and knees digging in narrow tunnels and come home late at night with bloody knees. Loretta's mother, Clara, cared for the children. For extra money and to help put food on the table, Clara would take in loads of laundry from the neighborhood and wash it by hand. Growing up, they were dirt poor. A family of 10, they all had to share a tiny cramped little coal miner's shack in the Appalachian Mountains. In the freezing winters, it was a real struggle to keep warm. Because they were so poor and had no money for wallpaper, Loretta's mother had to resort to desperate measures. To keep the cold and the wind from creeping through the cracks in the walls, she glued newspapers and pictures from the Sears catalogs to the walls. And that brings us to a really fun fact. 
Do you know where Loretta got her name from? Just before she was born, Loretta's mother had three pictures of pretty actresses on the wall to keep the wind from whistling in. They were Bette Davis, Claudette Colbert, and Loretta Young. Clara thought that of those three actresses, Loretta Young was the prettiest, and that's the name she chose for her daughter. As dark and dire as those times were for Loretta and her siblings, they always held fond memories for her. We didn't have money for wallpaper, but my mommy made that old house stay warm and beautiful. She once said, many of her most loved songs were inspired by her challenging childhood in Butcher Holler. Loretta Lynn passed away on October 4, 2022. She was 90 years old. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.